Hello there, my name is David Pistansky and welcome to my review of the Atari VCS. Now, the Atari VCS is the latest console to come from the mighty Atari, who are like the granddaddies of all video game console makers. We're going to break down everything this little box of joy can do, all of its different features, because this little unassuming box does actually pack quite a lot in. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so this is the Atari VCS console, and as you can see, it is quite small. It is bigger than your average, like, mini console, if you have, like, the NES Mini, or, like, the Super Nintendo or PlayStation Classic Mini consoles, and this can do those kind of things. It has a load of old Atari games built in, but it actually can do so much more than that. This thing is actually a mini PC, and you can go into PC mode to be able to do anything that you do on a PC within reason, because we are going to talk about the power of the console. You can also stream games from Xbox Cloud Online Gaming, you can stream games from Stadia, and you've got what they call Antstream Arcade that you can access on here to be able to play a ton of retro games from things like the Amiga, or the like perhaps the Spectrum, or the NES, like loads of classic arcade games on there as well well and of course there are a bunch of games that you can get specifically for the VCS and this includes that you can get from the download store you can get games that came out on like the Atari 7800 or you can get games that like are original designed for this like modern indie games 2D and 3D games are supported and it's like when you put all of this together this thing can actually do quite a lot now it is quite expensive and we're going to talk about like whether or not it's at the right price point or like whether or not it's like overshooting what it should do and if they should strip back some of the features but this is something I am super impressed with overall and let's break it down so first things first history lesson the Atari VCS is the first Atari console to come out since the mighty Jaguar came out in the mid 1990s now in terms of like any connections to this unfortunately you can't take any Atari Jaguar games or any past Atari console games and plug them into it because this is entirely based on being able to download games it doesn't take any physical media in that sense but you can like plug in like solid state drives or hard drives or thumbsticks to be able to add a lot more to it now it does take a little bit of a cue from the Atari Jaguar just in terms of like the color scheme so if we look here at the uh, VCS classic controller you'll see that they keep the original like dark with the red color scheme but that's probably so far the only connection to the Atari Jaguar hopefully in the future they'll make it so you can download Atari Jaguar games but at the moment alas you cannot you can however download tons of games that originally came out for the Atari 7800 now the 7800 was Atari's competitor really to the NES and it didn't do super well it had a relatively small library but an awful lot of them are available to download on the Atari VCS today the 7800 obviously was backwards compatible so you could plug in any of your Atari 2600 games as well now unfortunately because it's not backwards compatible with old cartridges in the same way that the 7800 is it means you won't be able to play classic games like E.T. the Extraterrestrial, at least not legally. If you use emulation, then of course you will be able to use this in the uh, system's PC mode. Okay, so looking at the design of the console, it's instantly familiar to retro Atari fans. Now, I don't have a 2600 to hand, but as I do have the 7800, you can see that it does go for that classic Atari like wedge style shape. And of course it does have the all important like wood effect on the front here which just instantly tells you that is the like the Atari brand they have paid a lot of homage to the Atari of the past with this but in terms of what it has from a modern standpoint on the front here we have two different USB ports and we have a couple more on the back now all of these are going to be somewhat essential you do have like wireless controllers which we'll speak about in a moment and that's great that they're wireless and work with this via Bluetooth because when you want to use this thing in PC mode, you're going to quickly find that you do use up these ports. I've been using a solid state drive, which I've plugged in externally here, although you can add one inside 
and we'll talk about that later on as well. But that takes up a port. Then if I have a controller plugged in, you will need a keyboard and mouse plugged in and very quickly you're gonna find that all of your ports are taken up. So I haven't tested this by adding a hub to be able to add lots more USBs, but I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. But it does just come with the four, which are gonna be used up very quickly by one or two controllers if you wanna play two control, two player games, and then a keyboard and mouse and an external hard drive if you want to do it that way as well. Also on the back here, we have HDMI, Ethernet, and AC, and then there's the power button. Now the power button does feel a little bit like it's a bit loose. It's not the most satisfying power button to switch on, but other than that, this looks very cool. It's something which sits you know, very nicely alongside my other consoles, and it's something that's very different, obviously, for a modern console compared to the ginormous PS5 or Xbox Series X. Okay, so having a look at the controllers. Now, when you get the console, you can get it in various forms from when you buy it from the Atari VCS shop. The standard version is that it comes with just the console and doesn't come with any controllers at all. Now, you can get the controllers and you have a choice. You can either get the classic style controller, which I have here, or you can get a modern style controller, which I don't have. The reason I don't have it is because for all intents and purposes, it is basically the same as like an Xbox Series X or an Xbox One controller. And I have found that using my Xbox One controller works absolutely fine with it. And so it's good that you can use pretty much any USB controller just plug it in and you'll get on just fine if you want to have like the Atari branded modern controller then I'm sure it's really good haven't tried it the reason I do have the Atari VCS classic controller is because this thing is is very different to this and it does stuff that that cannot do. The most important thing it does that that can't do is that it has the ability to be used as a classic style paddle. So as well as it being able to be used as a joystick as we see here, it's got that this rotates and then you can use it as a paddle for things like Breakout or Pong or any of the, like the classic games all from the Recharge series which reimagines these classic games that would benefit from paddle style controls. Also, just being able to play some Atari games using this, it gives you the feel that you probably do want if you're going to play the classic games and you want that sense of nostalgia, they are best played with an old style joystick. Now, this is slightly more updated than just being an old style joystick with a built-in paddle. It has, as well as the standard button here, it has like a bumper button, like a shoulder button there, which just gives you a little bit more that you can do in certain games. It adds in like a menu and a back button here, and it's got an Atari button, which is like a home button. Now beyond that, it's got LED lights that as you turn this round, you'll see the LED lights uh, like light up and move around the like the disc here which is just a cool lighting effect so this also rumbles which is something very weird to experience if you're playing like an old school Atari game now if you're used to using a control like this and this came with the Retron 77 so itself is an update of like the old school Atari controller but will actually work on old Atari hardware it's just like you're playing this you don't expect it to start rumbling but this does so I think this is very cool and something which will be just like the, more than just novelty is probably going to be some players preferred way to play some of the old Atari games and it also is so that it can work with like Android phones or just like PC games as well now just having a quick look also at the controller here here we can see the Atari Jaguar controller and once again talking about the color scheme of the thing we can see that like whereas this is like black with red this goes with the classic Atari black with red unfortunately there's that's the only connection we've got to the old Jaguar so far hopefully like I say they will add Jaguar support to the system in future so you can download some old Atari Jaguar games from the 1990s my suspicion is at the moment they're keeping things for like the glory days of the Atari brand with like the arcade, the 2600, you can get 5200 and 7800 games on there. But at some point they're going to introduce the Jaguar just because I think once people have some of those Jaguar games, they may not go back to some of the older like 2600 games. Okay, so now that we have broken down the design of the console and what you have in terms of controller options, let's talk about some of the other features of it. The first of which is that you can get a companion app, which is the Atari VCS app, which is something that allows you to 
uh, navigate things and connect it to the console just in case you don't have like the keyboard and mouse this is something that you can use for extra functionality to be able to get the most out of the VCS console. Now let's have a quick look here because as I mentioned this is upgradable so you can like take the front of this off here and then you can like start to open up the console there are like screws and stuff now I haven't opened mine up yet and I'm still debating whether or not I'm going to just because I'm happy with the results I've got out of it as it is but you can upgrade the RAM this is the 800 version and I think there's also a 400 version and what that means is the 400 version has four gigabytes of RAM whereas the 800 version has eight gigabytes of RAM you can upgrade the RAM in this thing and there's a bunch of videos out there on YouTube which show you how you go about upgrading the RAM and unfortunately it does look a little bit scary if you you're not used to doing that kind of thing. It's fairly painless enough, but there's a couple of things where you need to be careful that you don't knock things and displace things, like with the, perhaps like the Wi-Fi connector cables or whatever. But I haven't done that as of yet. In the future, I might do another video where I show if I do decide to upgrade the RAM. So you can also add an internal SSD drive to this thing. Now this comes with a 32 gigabyte SSD drive in it, but you can expand that. And like I said, using the USB ports, you can add like an external hard drive. And truthfully, I don't think you know, you're going to need to unless you're going to be going to add like PC mode to it. Now, PC mode, you are going to have to be able to add like an external thumbstick or external H HDD or SSD drive that's got Windows or like Linux installed in. And I've got a video where I'm going to put out to show you how I went about installing Windows onto this thing. It only took a few minutes and was fairly painless and all of the instructions to do it are available from the Atari VCS website. Now, in terms of the App Store, the App Store it's not got tons on it and it could probably do with some improvements just in terms of like not every game has got trailers so that you can see what it is that you're going to be buying and most of the games are just like old Atari mostly like 7800 games there might be some other old Atari games but like the main thing is that you get built into the console you get what they call the Atari VCS Vault and the Atari VCS Vault has a ton of games that come from the era of like the 2600 and early Atari arcade games and there is like absolutely hours and hours of playtime just with that. Now if this was a console which was going to rival just one of these like classic mini consoles then in terms of the Atari Vault offerings then it would be about on par. Now whereas this cost something like £60 or £70, I forget what it was originally, and this was something similar and then very quickly went down in price, this costing three, $400 depending on which like model you get, and I do say dollars because at the time of me making this video you have to get it from the States, you can't get it in the UK, I managed to get mine off of eBay but you can't, you'd have to like import it from the US. But it costing three or four hundred dollars is obviously a lot more than one of these would cost. So just in terms of the classic games available, it is on par with something like this or something like this in terms of what you would expect it to have. But in terms of value, if it was just for the VCS Vault, I would say it is not worth it. But, like I say, there is the App Store and you can download additional games, including the Atari VCS Vault number 2. Now this adds a ton more games which come from the arcade, the, um, like the 2600 and the 5200. And that's only like about perhaps $5, $7, something like that. And so it was very cheap just to be able to essentially double the amount of games that you have. And it's something which, as much as we'd like to have been able to download new games for the classic systems to these things, you couldn't instantly do it, at least not legally or officially. Now, as well as getting the Atari VCS Vault and the Vault 2, you do get like lots of other games. You get lots of 7800 games, which you can download for it possibly get some other Atari games from other systems but like I said you can't currently get Jaguar games you can't get Lynx games hopefully they'll come in the not too distant future because I really don't see any reason why they wouldn't want to make this like the ultimate Atari box now as well as the old classic games you can get like indie games for it and these include both 2d and 3d games and these are the kind of things which you'll often find on like the Nintendo Switch eShop or 
um, something like you you get these games onto like PlayStations and Xbox as well. But to give you the sense and flavour of what you get, it really does seem like these are things that you get, which were like ideally for like the Nintendo Switch, and that's great. But that's not all you can do because, like I said, this allows you to stream games via Xbox Cloud Gaming. And that just means that you've got access to dozens and dozens of different Xbox games. Now, depending on your internet connection, you're going to have different results. And when when I played it, I didn't connect it via Ethernet. I did do it over Wi-Fi. And for the most part, I was very happy with the results I got. I was playing things like Halo Infinite. You can play Forza. You can play like so many games like Doom Eternal. And they all work quite well. They're not perfect just in terms of there was a tiny bit of lag at times, tiny bit of the graphics breaking up and going pixely, but that's just the nature of streaming games over like Cloud Gaming or Stadia, which is also available on this device. You can get Stadia to work on it, and once again you're going to get similar results. So I tried playing Bomberman on there and it worked quite well. I played tried playing Cyberpunk and it Perhaps didn't work quite as well, but I'm, I'm not super knowledgeable about how the streaming works in a more demanding game, how much that should make the difference. It should just be that you get the video signal through and hopefully th there won't be much input lag. Another very cool thing you get on this is that you can access Antstream Arcade, which allows you to play old arcade games, old Amiga or PC games, things from machines like the Spectrum, and there are tons and tons of games which probably you'd forgot even existed existed or depending on your age you may never have experienced before but it's got games on there like Mortal Kombat and Pac-Man it's got like the Curse of Monkey Island and Monkey Island 2 the Chuck's Revenge it's got like Amiga style beat em up or fighting games uh, something like Body Blows is fun to play and it's and it's fun the way it works because it's like you put in credits and you can subscribe to it but you can use it for free and each day they do seem to give you like a few gems which is the uh, and stream arcade currency so that you can have a few goes at things and so far I haven't felt that I've needed to subscribe to it but there might be someone out there who finds this like the best thing ever. Okay so let's talk a little bit more about PC mode. So PC mode uh, like I said you're going to have to add Windows or Linux or perhaps some other operating systems that are compatible to this and I think from what I've said because like I said I haven't added uh, an internal additional hard drive to this myself I think think that you have to put it in through like a USB port as like a thumb drive. I've got mine on a external solid state drive and it works great. So you plug it in, you switch it on and then it will boot from Windows. Now I've got Windows 10 running on this. Now one thing I will note and it may just be that I haven't found the solution yet. If you do run it in Windows mode, I then just have to shut the whole thing down, unplug the external hard drive and then switch it back on to get it into Atari VCS mode. I don't see that there's a way to go from PC mode into Atari VCS mode. And when you see it says like Atari uh, PC, sorry, when you see that it says PC mode from the menu and you go onto it, it says insert an external thumb drive with Windows on and then you can reset the console. So literally you can't quite launch it from there, but it just tells you if you plug in the external drive with Windows on it or whatever operating system you want, you can then reset the system and it will boot from there. Now that's not a big problem because you just shut it down and then you just switch it on once you've taken the external drive out. You will need to plug in like a keyboard and mouse and any like additional controllers or any additional peripherals that you need to run things that you do on a PC. Uh, you can do things like photo, you basically can do anything like I'm running uh, Windows 10 on there and I've put on Photoshop and I've like installed Epic Games Store and uh, Steam games and I've had like a little bit mixed results I I'll be honest now if I'd upgraded the RAM then I'd be able to get more bang for my buck out of there but you'd only be able to push it so far I tried running Resident Evil 3 Remake and the 8 gigabytes of RAM in there it literally just couldn't open the game but I tried some other things uh, I was having it play like a lot of um, retro style games from like Steam so I was trying like Jet Set Radio on there uh, what else was I trying? I, I tried a bunch of them and for the most part I got a good result but if I was trying to run the, like, the latest games that have come out during the era of like the PS4 
for PS5. I'm sure some PS4 games would work actually, but like Resident Evil 3 Remake has come out during the era of like the Xbox Series X and it didn't seem to run, but I'm sure you'll be able to push it further if you upgrade that RAM. But still, from what I've seen others have said, it's not going to ever like match up to the latest gaming PCs or gaming laptops. So you have to manage your expectations. But this does mean that it is great for emulation. So you can run emulators on it and you can have a lot of fun doing things that are like NES, NES, so like NES Super NES, um, N64. I've seen people have played Dreamcast games on there, PlayStation 1 games, and so basically that's what makes this so cool. And some people will say, like, why don't you just get like a retro pie and just be able to put MAME and all of those things on it? You could do, but this, this allows you, when you break it down, to play all of the Atari Vault games, to play all of the Antstream arcade games. It allows you to play anything that's on Stadia and anything that's on Xbox Cloud Gaming. And then after all of that, you can then put it into PC mode and play anything from Steam or Epic Game Stores. And yes, there will be some limitations just in terms of running things at full resolution and the highest frame rate. But if you switch things down, as you can often do in Steam, then you can get some pretty good results out of this. Which just means that when you consider that it can do all of those things, it's like if you go onto your PS5, you cannot play those Xbox games. You cannot get to Antstream Arcade. It doesn't have like the Atari VCS Vault. Now, obviously, this then doesn't have like Horizon Forbidden West, and it doesn't have like Super Mario Odyssey. So it does have things that it doesn't have, and it does have things that it does have. But considering that for a lot of people, this is just basically like another mini classic console. This is nothing compared to everything that you can do on this. And so for that, I would say that this is something that I would recommend. I wouldn't say it's necessarily for everyone. If you've got like family and you just think like we want to get like PlayStation 5 games and we want to get like Xbox or Switch games, then this isn't exactly going to be that. But if you are like a gaming enthusiast, if you're a collector especially, but if you just like being able to tinker with machines and be able to like upgrade them and have just like like to support like Atari who are obviously like I say the granddaddy company in the video game industry that's still around even though they're owned by different people this is just a way to continue to get Atari's legacy to continue on and uh, I don't think I did mention actually but then you get like the recharged series like there's Centipede and Black Widow Pong and then there's like Tempest 4000 and there'll probably be a bunch more and the more that they're supported the more they'll continue to put more of these out so Overall, my final thoughts on the Atari VCS is that it is a really cool console. It is, and that's the best way to put it, it's something that's cool to have. It's not the greatest thing ever. It's definitely got things that can be improved about it. Like I said, like the App Store could have some more information, perhaps it could have Diff like I couldn't get the filters to work. I saw a thing about filters. I'm sure that was just me not being able to press the correct button and be able to filter through, but there aren't tons of games on the App Store anyway. Um, being able to have like different video previews for everything on the App Store I think should be essential at this stage, just because I think you want to be able to see what the games are that you're downloading just in action to be able to see them running for a moment or two. Um, I'd like to see more recharge games, I'd like to see Atari Jaguar games, I'd like to see, just like you know, Atari have put games out on the Evercade, I'd like to see Atari like do some deals with other publishers to see some older legacy games come out. Like, wouldn't it be amazing, I don't know where I've put it now, but wouldn't it be amazing if we could actually get it so that we could download and play uh, E.T. the Extraterrestrial on this, like legally, that this actually had a re-release all these years later. Now, if they were to do like a recharged version of, of like E.T. the Extraterrestrial, I think that would just be amazing. And I almost feel like, you know, they might allow it to happen because imagine if they did a recharged version where they fixed the gameplay and made it a better game, but also had some like bonus content where it went over the history about the fact that these were all buried in the Nevada desert and that kind of thing. Uh, being able to add Atari Jaguar games is something I'd like to be able to see. Um, that would be something very cool. Oh look, my green screen is taking out the side of more face. Um, but there you go, that's my review of the Atari 
VCS. Now I'm going to have a ton of, review of reviews for the different games that are available for it. We're going to play some of the individual games from like the Atari VCS Vault and we'll look at the vaults overall plus some of the indie games you can do in it. I'm going to have the video to show how I installed Windows on this thing but I'm really pleased with the Atari VCS. I'm really excited just to see what else comes out of this box over the next two, three, four years. Uh, hopefully it'll be supported by Atari for a long time and they'll continue to make uh, improvements and updates to it. Hopefully it will get a release in Europe and the UK just because then there'll be more of a community for it over here. But I'm going to be covering a lot of stuff for the Atari VCS. So if you enjoy this content, make sure you smash that subscribe button. I've got multiple YouTube channels. And so whichever one you're watching this on, it should be the Geek Battle Gaming one. But in case you find me somewhere else, just smash that subscribe button. We've got a couple of websites, geekbattle.tv and also extreme.tv, where you may discover this video. But wherever it is, do check them out because we've got loads of retro gaming content coming up on them all the time. So, from me, until next time, I'm David Postansky. Ciao for now.